What's up kids, welcome back to another episode of the Art Lessons Podcast. Today, Adam and I go to a park. Let's go. That's right folks, it's another episode of Art Lessons. I'm your host Dave Connery and in this podcast and this show we like to give real-time ideas about living a creative life, building a creative business, whatever other creative thing that you like to do, we're going to talk about that. In today's episode, Adam and I get down to talking about all kinds of different things like e-commerce platforms like Shopify. We also talk about the economic status of what it's like to build a creative business these days and how that's changing. We also talk about some other fluffy things and why Adam does the particularly weird quirky thing that he does. And it's really not weird, but he thinks it's weird. You'll just have to decide for yourself. Let's get to it. All right, here we are, another episode of Art Lessons Podcast. Adam. What's up? Dave. Here Welcome. to talk about creative stuff. We're out in the open. We said we were going to do this. We said we were going to get outside, get some ambient noise. And it's not as bad as I thought. Like, we've got a playground right behind us over here. I don't like the looks of those kids. <laughs> those <laughs> damn kids. Uh, we've got a, we've got uh, cars over here. We've got a s- little skate park over there. And it actually sounds pretty good. You yeah, know? it's nice to be out. Nice yeah. to be outside. Feels good, even though it's not. It's a little, w- little breezy. Hopefully, you guys aren't catching a ton of wind. Doesn't sound like it. I'm not hearing a bunch yeah. of wind noise. So yeah, at least it's n- it's warm but windy. But the wind is good. Wind is good. Wind is good. Yeah. So how you been? I'm all right. How you been? It's good. been hot, hot. Uh, yeah, seriously. Like, wait, did did I tell you? Like, we went on our little vacation, right? Mm-hmm. We, uh, Leslie and I and the family. We went to Del Mar, California. Came back one day. And then saw that it was going to be like 106 or 110 that went next day. And we were like, fuck it. <laughs> like we, yeah. We went and got a hotel room in Newport Beach, the Newport Beach Marriott. My wife works at Marriott, so we got a smoking deal. Nice. And stayed in air conditioning that night, went to the pool, did all that. So that was the best decision ever. It was we, still hot, but it was like <laughs> bearable. Yeah, we did something very similar. We ended up going to Palm Springs, my wife and I, for our ninth wedding anniversary, which we do annually. Um, and it was 108, 108, 109. But it's in Palm Springs. You're in the pool all the time. Yeah, right. You know, um, having a, like a mojito or something. <laughs> so, no, it was good. So we loved it. So. I'm right there with you. We were in the heat. In the heat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you know going out there. Like, I mean, oh, it was. True. I hear what you're saying. It was you going out there, and you know it's going to be hot, right? Mm-hmm. You know you expect it to be hot out there. You don't expect that kind of heat, that extreme, in June in California. It was, what was it, last, a week? Well, yeah, a week ago from when we were recording this. Yes, it was Friday. It yeah. was what was it like 106 in long beach or whatever it, no it got hotter than that it got to 110 oh it did get to 100 when i drove kind of where you live over in the bixby knolls yeah. california heights area yeah and it was 110 out there it's ins- yeah it was insanely hot that day yeah it was yeah. so nuts and it, like my air conditioning in the car was just struggling yeah it was just sucking in all this hot air it's just like please you're making me work too hard i don't so. want to see our electric bill this month it's gonna be <laughs> You have AC in your place? We got, yeah, so we bought, like we, I told you, we bought a house a year ago, and then we've got central air in it. I don't think it'll be too bad, actually, but um, we call it the wind of the wealthy, <laughs> and we're not wealthy, <laughs> so, um, you know, we use it. We we definitely use it. We'll see how it goes, but yeah. yeah, it was good to have, for sure. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, all we have is a small little, and this is ec- epic podcast conversation, by the way, but all mm-hmm. we have is a small tiny little swamp cooler that goes in the window oh, of yeah. our biggest room in the house so it, it works extra hard just to get any cold air in there it's one of those things where you just have to start it first thing in the morning and let it get up to speed so that by the time you get to four o'clock it's like okay i've got a rhythm here but <laughs> meanwhile <laughs> that 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 meter outside is just clicking away our shop at our in our warehouse down in costa mesa it literally like you can't I didn't go into work Friday because of the heat. I knew it was going to be so bad. And then all of this week, it's been pretty bad. So I've been trying to get in there early and trying to get out kind of early afternoon or, you know, because it just, it actually feels like it gets kind of worse. Like in late afternoon, like all the heat yeah. emanates from the warehouse. Like it's it's trapped all this heat now and it's right. just stagnant. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was a roaster for sure. Yeah. So well, it's okay. Today we're better. We're, you know, yeah, like first world problems, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. California problems. <laughs> Boo. California problems. We're, we're so hot here. <laughs> right. uh, this guy's from Canada. Uh, yeah, I am from Canada. So yeah. he knows. Yeah. Well, you know, the difference is, is there's no, there's no 
humidity. That's yeah. the difference. So actually, you know, um, we were talking earlier about my parents who are from Canada, still live in Canada. They uh, they had a heat wave. Yeah, I think it just snapped, but it was about two or three week heat wave where it was in the 110, you know, yeah. area. And it just, so you got the heat, but then you get the humidity on top of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, whenever you hear that, oh, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. It's, yeah, well, they got both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was tough. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. yeah. It gets hot in Canada, super hot. Yeah. So anyway, mm. what, uh, what's going on at work? How are things going? Uh, things are good. We're kind of, so July for us, it gets kind of, it slows down a little bit in July where I try to do a little bit more. I'm going to be starting doing more designing probably in the next week or two um, as we ramp into fall, uh, you know, fall designs. Um, yeah, July typically isn't really crazy on the wholesale end. Um, we're still trying to, you know, uh, crack the nut of our online sales more. Um, but good for the most part, yeah. 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 You use Shopify now, right? So yeah, still use Shopify. Um, I, I used uh, another one years ago, but yeah, it's been Shopify for the last three years. Same yeah. here. Oh, look yeah. at that! You oh. just got kissed by a butterfly. <laughs> That was very pleasant. On camera. Right. <laughs> right. We caught it on <laughs> film. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. It, it, it. It's, I mean, I think it's crazy how how much they, I mean, I mean, you've got Squarespace and uh, Wix as well, but I mean, I think they've, they've really, I guess kind of in essence, kind of got the majority of the market really. Yeah. Well, I especially like on the e-commerce level, I think that, you know, like being able to, like they've got all these different tools that you can bring in. And, and just even if you didn't, even if you just kept it, it completely. So I know you just, I think you just got kissed by the butterfly too. Did I? Yeah. They, on, she, on li- head, she, yeah. Li- she likes us. Yeah. Like, or he <laughs> likes us. <whatever. laughs> yeah. Um, no, it just, if you have just the basic apps like MailChimp app to get your emails or, or what do I use? I use uh, Printful for my mugs and yep. stuff like yep. that, or I, and a couple other apps, basic apps. You do that with Shopify, and that's like fully functional website in you know for thirty bucks a month, and you can do pretty much anything. Like you don't need all the like if you're doing a massive amounts of sales and you need other uh, like other tools to get you to do that, you can. But man, it's such a robust system. Yeah, it's I like it a lot. I mean, it's crazy w- w- when I think. So they're actually a Canadian company. They're based in Ottawa. I didn't know. Um, that. Canadian company, which is great. Um, I think they have offices all over the world now. But they, it seems to me, I've been using them. Geez, I've been using them for at least yeah for about three years. It's kind of crazy how quickly they got huge. Yeah. Like I mean, you know what I mean. I guess it's not crazy these days with high tech, but it's like the you know there was big you got you know big commerce you got magento these are sort of uh, highly um for a lot of people doing large volume e-commerce but yeah shopify really uh, they really uh cornered it quickly i feel yeah like. i think they, they for sure and i don't know how what their strategy was but i'm guessing they probably just put it in the hands of people that were like important like i don't know if you know who neil patel is yes I so do. i mean i think he was a i don't know if maybe he was a backer of them or he uses them or used them yeah a little bit and so i think he was pushing them a little bit and some other places some other bigger names uh use them and so i think it just kind of like by osmosis kind of developed from using those you and know, seeing those other people use it uh g- related but sort of unrelated uh, i was reading today or yesterday on there i don't know if you saw this about uh um, which kardashian was it wasn't kylie was it kylie yeah kylie how she's basically going to be worth Nine hundred million dollars. Yeah, uh, you know she's twenty-one now. She's gonna she'll hit a, a valuation of a billion faster, I guess, in terms of her age than Zuckerberg. <laughs> but what was crazy? I was reading the article on Forbes, and they're they're talking about it. It's kind of interesting. So she's got this, you know, it's it's her um, her lip care line. Oh yeah, and and she's only got seven employees. She doesn't have any kind of office. So it was essentially run out of her mom's house. Wow. And Shopify, like this is the tie back to Shopify. So Shopify Plus, I guess they there's levels of Shopify like where you're doing massive amounts of shipping. So yeah. I mean they're doing like eight hundred million dollars worth of stuff, I guess. Um, they they do all the fulfillment and um, they don't have they don't have, they don't have any warehousing anything and it's pretty astounding the footprint is so small you know um and then the fact that she's bringing in so much money it, it it's crazy yeah uh, i mean i i instantly kind of thought about it 
well, I mean, I guess it's kind of similar to what you're talking about with, with printing and stuff, but you just don't really need like the same traditional infrastructures, you know? No, um, but, not at all. And then, sorry, like, so I'm going off on a tangent, but, no, no, but I was just, just kind of like, wow, like 900 million. That's insane. Right. It's insane. She's actually going to, well, I mean, I don't want to turn this into a Kardashian talk, but I mean, Karda- Kim Kardashian, she has a worth of like 350 million. Yeah. And now she's surpassed her sister, who is essentially the queen bee of of, of the family, three times over. It's ins- it's insane. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, you know, and and props to Chris Kardashian, really, because she's the mastermind of the whole thing. She's getting her ten percent, right? She she's, gets her ten percent on everything, right? I mean, she really is the mastermind. Like she basically said, "We're going to use all of this stuff." We're like she told Kim. I mean, I don't know the conversation. But she was the one that said, Kim, we're going to use this video. Oh, yeah. The sucks tape. Yeah. To to our advantage. Yeah. it's uh, And it became, I mean, it, remember how she used to be the friend of Paris Hilton. A oh, total tangent here. God, we're so old, right? Right. Oh. Total. The friend of Paris Hilton. And now Paris Hilton is like an afterthought, right? I mean, well, she's already, I mean, she's trust fund kid. No, but, anything, but but when you think about it, you're, you're I know what you're getting at. Yeah. And now she's the big one, or she was the big one, and now her sister is going to pass surpass her and Kylie and uh, and even uh, who's the other one? The the model. Um, oh, uh, Kendall, Kendall Jenner. Y- y- yeah, I mean she's got she's got a big future in front. Well, of but her it's, too. it's it's so funny, right? Like, cause you're you're right. Like, I know you're you're getting it too, but it, it's so it, it's all relative to their level of success, right? It's just like, oh my gosh, like I'm only making three hundred and fifty million dollars, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like, it's like compared to how did where did she get to be so popular that she can make eight hundred million? Uh, it's just it's <laughs> just so interesting how how quickly you know things like that can happen. Um, but yeah. anyway, that was, aside from going on a Kardashian tangent, yeah, yeah. I was actually, so I was reading that Forbes article. So Shopify was making, just in terms of um, uh, commissions a year on on, f- on the fulfillment and everything, they were making a little over $550,000 on these commissions um, just for doing very little, essentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that you're working into you're going to get into the design period here once the summer's done or whatever yeah. and i wanted to talk to you about that sure. um because you have some designs where you design them obviously and then you have some designs like you hire out illustrators or whatever yep, yep. How, what's the percentage there like well first uh, off let me well, ask one other question sure. first how many new designs do you typically introduce like in a new season or something like that uh you know what too many uh usually <laughs> it's about and definitely not all by my by myself it's like about 80 mm-hmm. which it's a bit of a bad habit to be honest it shouldn't be that much because i think i think i think in a lot of ways it's just been throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall and see what sticks yeah i mean you always kind of go with what you think is based on what's going on trending wise or based on um what is sort of done well in the past and you know you kind of recreate some of that but at the same time you know you may have executed it well you may have executed it poorly and then sometimes stuff you just didn't even anticipate does well yeah. you know so I'm, I'm always i'm always doing too much stuff so i i would say you know what a, a lot of it i don't really have a lot of time to design mm-hmm. even in this kind of scope uh like with colin i we kind of get together for ideas calling uh, gauntlets a friend of mine and he's an amazing designer he's a really great illustrator which is not my strong point and so he uh we get together and i have some ideas and he has ideas and we kind of just meet for an afternoon and kind of ba- basically hash it out yeah i just want to take a little bit of credit here that i introduced colin and you did together, so you did you can take all the i credit. want my 10 percent <laughs> <laughs> you get your ten percent. You get a butterfly kiss, <laughs> not from me, from the butterfly. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah. So he, we, we do that, and then there's other people. You know, there's actually, you know, there's a lot of people I, I've worked with. Um, uh, Jimmy Bryant, the, the uh, Atomic Child, he's great. Dooman, who's in uh, the UK. Uh, Liam Hillhurst, I think it's, or Le- I think it's Hillhurst. Yeah. Alina, this uh, she goes under her screen name is uh, Aline v- Vod, I think on Instagram. She's really awesome. And a lot of times, like I kind of know what I like, and I'm sort of picking them for the styles that they're doing. Yeah. And a lot of time, a lot of these designers are basically making stuff, and they're just sitting on it. Yeah. So a lot of time, I'll just buy it off them. 
you know, and a, it, a pretty it, like some like some design they messed up. Yeah, and then with. I'll either adjust it if it if, if I'll take an element from it or I'll take the whole thing. You know what I mean? But I'll, I'll basically just pay you know their 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 commission fee on it, yeah. and, and it works well. Yeah. So then I don't know what the percentage. Long story short, uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's almost fifty fifty now. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. So a while back, obviously you did all the design work. Yeah, I did. Yeah. When you started making that switch. Where you started buying illustration, or at least hiring people, like was that tough for you, like to, uh, to say, like to kind of hand over the reins of the creative side? No, oh no, it, it was actually kind of it, no, not really. It was it was a little bit of a a relief, mm. a bit because I think it, it sort of brought a little bit of a a, a breath of fresh air into it because it, it was just so sick of looking at, despite the fact different ideas, it was cool to kind of just have a different interpretation yeah you know what i mean through someone you know you're still in essence other than what i mentioned about buying them prepackaged, you're already you're art directing them um which i was used to when i was in the you know the the traditional type role yeah but uh yeah no i i i uh i love it and and at the time i i liked it a lot it it kind of brought a a, brought a new sort of blood to it yeah life yeah did it change the way you work too like i mean and like that like when now do you look at the stuff that you produce now and do you feel like it fits more into a box that that better they're not a box but rather that that it fits more in line with what other people are producing or are you still doing your own thing your own way mm. or somewhere in the middle i mean sometimes because of what has happened of using out like different styles although it kind of still all fits the in, into the 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 vibe of what we're doing yeah uh it just it it, it this is where we pause no we're good okay well, well now we're gonna pause yeah i just paused i was, I was losing my train <laughs> of thought no i think i think um one of the challenges since i've decided to start using people it's been a few years since i've been using people uh sometimes i i'm not sure if it's cohesive enough but it seems to be working sometimes i kind of feel like we're a little bit too fragmented but you know yeah but the, the tough thing is like it's a completely other conversation but i i think you know if it's all my style there's definitely people uh, or accounts that we sell to that just buy my style and that's it yeah and then there's other accounts that buy none of my style will buy some of the other illustrators that i buy and that kind of you know and so over time of who i've been using i've kind of understood my customer a little bit more mm. um you know because it's also too i mean based on uh like doing a lot of surf related stuff i you know i i, I can't albeit there is a lot of attraction to surf related stuff say in the midwest it's a harder sell for smaller stores unless you're like a hurley or a rip curl or something you know mm-hmm. what i mean like yeah. a smaller boutique's not gonna buy my surf stuff in the middle of the u.s right uh, we just don't have the name for it you right know, so yeah yeah and part of this is the, the reason i'm bringing this up is you know we talked about briefly about this new project i've got going on the mm-hmm. tiger hero media one that's been awesome yeah the, the the idea essentially is to create items that people designers or other creatives or even people who were not necessarily creative but have access to certain softwares photoshop illustrator adobe InDesign, whatever can take the stuff that i do and make their own thing, right? I create a template, they go and do their own thing. Like I created a magazine template called Bug Out that's out now, and it's a 40-page template, and somebody can go and take it, use the idea, which is like more outdoorsy, kind of survivalist type thing, use that idea, incorporate their own text, their own images, and go with it. Or they can use just the blanket template and then go their own way, right? Yeah, make whatever, it. right? Yeah. And that's just one thing. And But part of me is like thinking to myself like how do i know what people want right because this is kind of a new venture for me mm-hmm. and it's like okay well do they need that kind of template i'm sure they do because they obviously they sell them like we were talking about selling this stuff on creative market and it's one of the things that uh, that's up there and they're relatively popular that's one of the more popular like magazines are popular thing and i think a lot of people are very nostalgic about magazines like the the want to do a magazine I don't know how well they'll sell, but it's not about me worried about how much they're going to sell. It's about me just saying, "Hey, look, here's here's your here's your bootstrapping opportunity to get into this template. Go for it, right?" Yeah, I mean, I like I I think it's a great idea. I think um, uh, having the the templates is a great uh, 
thing for any designer i think um the photoshop brushes i think is great i think whether they're gonna buy it or not i, I would probably just think about it the way that you think about what you would need yeah you know what i mean yeah um and that's kind of the thing it's like i was thinking like okay well what's what am i not seeing in the marketplace and i actually went and dug deep into the templates the magazine templates on creative market just to see what was there and again they're just InDesign templates so essentially they're all the same except for the fact that they have a different layout right if you extract all of the images and all the text out of them they're essentially just blocks of blocks mm -hmm. <laughs> pages of blocks and so anyone can do the job of what you're looking to do. It's just a matter of like what's aesthetically going to get you out the gate. And one of the things that I saw there is that it was all these really pretty things, which is good. Uh, and, you know, some like kind of like very modern minimalistic style, like uh, I can't think of the name of that magazine that like kind of started, almost started the kicked off the magazine, the minimalist magazine. Oh, wallpaper? Not wallpaper. No, it's more it's more indie than that. It starts with a K. It's about food and living and kind of lifestyle, almost like a lifestyle blogger turned it into a magazine. Um, oh. I can't think of what it's called. But anyway, so I saw that happening a lot. And obviously, it's popular, but I thought, well, but nobody's doing this other thing. And maybe it's maybe there doesn't need to be this other thing. But I'm a, it's something I think is missing from the marketplace. So I'm going to put it out there and see. You know, worst case scenario, it doesn't sell. I can easily take that almost that exact same template, replace the imagery with something that is more trendy. Or if I wanted to, probably not gonna do that, but I could, and immediately just reput reput it out there <laughs> as this new thing with new imagery, and that maybe that'll be the selling point. I mean, I, I I'm like when I was talking to you about uh, Creative Market, like I've bought a ton of um, different fonts and and whatnot, and. The key for me from a purchasing uh, angle has always been, um, obviously it's got to, the content's got to be good, yeah. what, whatever it is, but then the cost. Uh, and, and, you know, like for the most part, you know, it's like 25 bucks, yeah. 15 bucks. Or yeah, my like, template's $29. Like, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, like if you're a, a designer really chugging out stuff, that is such a small amount of money really at the end of the day when you're, sort of valuing your productivity yeah you know what i mean i mean just for example going back to what you're talking about with magazines um and our magazine template you know back in the day when i was working uh when i was an art director doing magazines a lot of inspiration you know we were always stockpiling magazines of you know every kind essentially to get uh you know photography inspiration get layout inspiration yeah. and a template's not going to replace that. You're always going to have that. But, I mean, I, I can't even tell you the amount of hours I've probably spent looking to, especially when you're cranking out a magazine, trying to get, okay, like, how am I going to lay this out? You know, I've, yeah. I've exhausted every single, you know what I mean? So I think all those resources are sort of invaluable. And the cost is so cheap. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's kind of it. Like, being able to give somebody a foot in the door on whatever project is they want to do, you know. And even if, like, I've done, I've bought stuff from Creative Market, too, but because, it was like, the idea of it was cool. And then I didn't, like, if it was a font, maybe I used it once, right? And that's fine. It did its purpose, mm -hmm. right? It served its purpose, and the cost was, like you said, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, unless it's a really deep font with a bunch of weights and all that, you know. But uh, for the most part, yeah. I mean, because... I don't remember who I was talking to. Was I talking to you about... No, no. I was talking with a friend of mine about this font that we used on the magazine back in the day called Adele. Oh, okay. And it's a sans serif... No, it's a serif font. And it was kind of a little bit modernist, but uh, fit well with what we were doing. And it was $1,000. And it had like... I mean, it had like 20 different weights. Right. But it was a thousand dollars like buy it on font like myfonts.com or was something it like, like a that. hofler or something like who, who put it out do you remember no they i think it was an independent oh okay i think it was a um well it was a it was a smaller foundry yeah but uh that was one of the ones like there was like i think it was actually there was a european uh team i don't remember what it was but it was just like god thousand dollars but i wasn't paying for it yeah my company paid for it <laughs> so <laughs> i was like we're gonna buy it because because i didn't want to keep using like Oh God! Okay, another Bodoni, another Garamond, right. another Pl uh, Palatino, whatever yeah. you know, like yeah. whatever uh, Optima, whatever. It you sucks know. when you look at stuff that you know how 
good it can look but because of things like you know you you know you have to have legitimately licensed fonts which everyone should have but when you're at a company it's even that much more so yeah um and it just looks like garbage <laughs> you know what i mean but you don't have a thousand bucks right and you've got to use like bodoni yeah um yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Badoni. I yeah, think it's, I'm not, I think, I'm I not think, encouraging like non-licensed fonts either. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah don't, don't piracy. We do not encourage yeah, piracy encourage here that. on the Art Lessons podcast. I had a I had, a, I had something I was going to ask you, but I I just it, it was uh, what was I going to ask you? Oh, you know that goes back to what I now I remember now. Uh, it's a similar kind of thought, like with. Uh, you know, buying illustrations from designers, either that they're pre-done, yeah. you know, because at the end of the day, I mean, there's a lot, uh, it, it's, it, it's a bit of a crapshoot, you know, sometimes I've bought and stuff that, you know, to be honest, has done nothing, like hasn't done anything. Um, and then other stuff where it's paid for itself, like, a hundred times over yeah you know so it's that kind of thing so it's kind of similarly like when you're okay well i'm gonna buy a font for 25 dollars i might i might use it once and get its value or it might for 25 dollars i mean you've bought a you know a font that's going to be a staple of your repertoire for a long time yeah would you subscribe to the idea that the whole 80 20 rule like 20 percent of your of your illustrations that you buy or 20 percent of your purchases whether it's font mm -hmm. illustrations whatever pay for their 80 percent the rest of the 80 percent of the stuff that you I, I would say yeah i mean very it's rare you know you know what's the interesting is, thing is sometimes the stuff that may not sell uh like in a season that i bought for may sell a year later hmm. you know um i had a, a couple designs i did with colin that did absolutely nothing uh one season we went to to, to magic and then the next one it just took off to go yeah, yeah. i mean i had a, I, I knew it was a good design i knew it was going to do well but i was kind of confused as to why it wasn't really doing well just a little ahead of its time it, uh, i mean we're we weren't reinventing the wheel or anything but it just <laughs> i don't know the timing or something was just yeah something wasn't right and it but it, it, it came up later and it worked fine mm -hmm. you know have you ever killed off a design and then realize like oh shoot I should have I should have kept that on because then the trend came around to something similar mm, never really I mean the, the great thing about uh, the way it works in our shop is we can stockpile stuff and just don't really ever have to kill it unless it's something that's like you know where's the beef or something <laughs> you know which we don't own obviously but if it was something similar right you know what I mean like um, you know yeah. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean. You can, when you we, say stockpile, you mean stockpile. Like you can have shirts available. You don't necessarily have to print out. No, no, no. So at our shop, because we've we can uh, we anything that's big is screen printed. Anything that's small, like is all direct to garment. Um, so we can, you know, we, we don't we can sit on design if it we we need to print one of them. We can print one of them. You yeah, know, it's not a big deal. That's a great thing. I love that. That's kind of the same same credos as what uh, print in does yeah you know um, is it print -in or printful 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 well That's there's a printful couple does. there's print 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 uh was printful is the one i use and then there's another one called printly or printed or something like that yeah yeah that one's not i've heard that one's not as good printful is an excellent yeah company. they're in i think they're chatsworth right the, well they have a couple of different yeah they started in chatsworth okay they have another one um southeast coast somewhere i think or maybe in the south and then they just opened up another one in Europe so that they could do, uh, you know, VAT stuff without... I think that's where they're from originally, isn't it? Isn't the, the founder, I think, from... He's a European, I think. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. It's a good company, though. I mean, they do good work. And they... I just had an issue the other day where somebody bought one of my shirts. It's one of the things I don't sell very often is shirts, but somebody bought one of my shirts. Actually, what it was is they... This is the beauty of it, right? I had a shirt design, but it was on a unisex shirt. And the woman said, do you have these in, can you do this on a woman's shirt? And I said, yeah. In fact, I popped it. I went back into Printful. The next opportunity I had, which was later that day, ran up a design, you know, like on their template, right? And then put it up on a sh on the shop for her to buy. She bought it. She got it. The design was a little off kilter, like it wasn't quite centered. And so she let me know. She was totally 
um, cordial about it and, you know, very um, accepting of, uh, or, well, I, I apologize. And she was like, no, don't worry about it. But, if, you know, what can we do? And I said, let me look into it. I contacted Printful that day and they said, oh, we're sorry to hear about this. We'll send out a new one. We'll, I see that the design is wrong. We'll, um, we'll fix that and send it out. And they, they fixed it immediately, sent it out the next day. That's she cool. had it a couple days later. And that, like, no cost to me, no cost to her. And I've had a couple of incidences where that's happened, where they like something got messed up, or like a shipment, like I shipped a, a mug to a friend in Trinidad, and it never. Oh, great! We got a lawnmower. You're gonna have a lawnmower in the background, guys. Huh. <laughs> we got, we've got. Uh, we got a lawnmower. We got a lawn. We got. Uh, you're gonna have a little bit of lawnmower in the background. This is the this is the one downside to being yeah. in. The <laughs> <laughs> like lawnmowers. <laughs> anyway, so we, we didn't talk about lawnmowers in the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> lawnmowers didn't come up, <laughs> but now we got to add that to the bucket. And we got a list. horn too. Oh yeah, and a horn. Yeah, we got, we're getting all kinds. You're getting all kinds of uh, <laughs> ambient noise going <laughs> yeah. on. We had the big crying baby earlier. We got the kids in the background. This is what makes it authentic, folks. Anyway, so like I sent this mug to Trinidad and it disappeared. And they che- they waited a little bit to see what happened with it, and the 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 girl, oh, and a power sprayer, beautiful. That's why it's not a lawnmower; it's a power sprayer. Awesome, that's great for my equipment too. <laughs> so we might have to sign this one off yeah, soon. But boy. anyway, so they didn't find it, and so they just sent her a new one, and then it came back. So she got two mugs, and they were like, whatever. Yeah. You know, they said, don't even worry about sending it back; just keep it. Right. And I was just like, that's bitching. Right. I mean, I hope that doesn't happen a lot. I mean, it hasn't happened a lot, but it, it, when it did happen, they took care of it. And that's 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 a sign of a great company. That yeah. I'm going to be loyal to. See, the, the problem with I can't I would love. Well, we have the same situation like we have it built into our warehouse, like, the, you know, the machines they're using. But we can't I couldn't do wholesale using them. Yeah. They're just not the way that their their pricing structure is. It just it, it wouldn't reflect. Yeah. reflect well it's great for direct to consumer um exactly do they do neck labels on your shirts they too? do now they do yeah on cer- but on certain only on certain shirts um wait do they do them yeah i think they do because that was my other thing too i i couldn't like i, I would need to have a neck label in it you yeah know? And i think they do i i'm pretty sure i've never used one yeah i know they'll do the back patch like the back the upper neckline yeah they'll do that and i think they can on certain designs or certain s- yeah i can't remember how it works but yeah basically there's certain ones but obviously every time you put something printed it's, yeah your it's cost, g- your cost your, goes your up cost a little is bit going more. Up. and they're paying you know the price on per shirt is obviously higher yeah so direct to consumer it might be you know it's great for direct to consumer i i've yeah, I mean, one of the places that does uh, some of our larger volume screen printing is doing some direct to garment, and you know we'll see what happens in the future. I mean, as the market's kind of going where it's going, power sprayer, power sprayer. <laughs> um, it, it, you know, I'm always looking at ways that I can kind of reduce my overhead. Yeah, you know, and um, yeah, maybe the days of having. Uh, a warehouse in, in in the next year or so might might not exist. You know, we might get rid of that. And yeah, I mean, obviously your margin is higher. You know, it but is, but but you know, it's 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 a real it's a real dance of. Um, I mean, your margin is smaller. I guess you could say, right? Your margin is smaller on that because your your cost to produce it is higher, and your than your retail. Right? Are you are you saying if we outsource that? Yeah, if you outsource. If it. we outsource it, yes, but then we. So, here's where it gets like. If, so, for example, um, there's a, a few screen printers we use that do full package for us. You yeah. know what I mean? And, um, you know, they're doing like three, four, seven, eight, ten thousand pieces, you know, all bagged. Now, if I brought it to another screen printer who wouldn't do uh, full package, but would screen print it for us, we could probably save a little bit of money. But the amount we're saving versus what we're getting it's just not worth it so it's funny sometimes you can get kind of fooled into thinking that well if i take all this on board i'm going to save x amount of dollars you know what i mean but sometimes taking it on isn't worth the savings yeah you know what i mean right so that's what i'm kind of struggling with i'm I'm struggling with the uh finding someone good because there's always some technical parameters to outsource like smaller run units like Uh. in internet and stuff like that um 
but uh yeah i'd love to not have our space we've had our space our latest space for like five years i'd love to get rid of it in a year if i could yeah i'm back to the whole chloe kardashian or whatever which one chloe yeah what's it kylie uh, no kylie, kylie jenner kylie, kylie. Jenner, I, think. I mean i think yeah yeah i i get into that i get into that uh that frame of mind like which is a bad frame of mind to be in <laughs> do it all type yeah. frame of mind which is a really bad frame of mind but the problem is sometimes uh for me at least i've had tons of different people work for me that's a whole another thing to deal with finding great people which i've been lucky i've had great people yeah but even then sometimes it's just you know i'm not a very good manager um but uh Basically, what I'm saying sometimes is when you start delegating, delegating actually can cost you money too. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah. <laughs> I just want to reduce. I, I mean, just talking on a personal level, because this is what this is all about. I, I'd like to reduce some of my overhead as I watch, you know, the market going crazy, and I see, you know, Trump is putting tariffs. Yeah. Uh, you know, on China, which is going to ultimately that's going to have an effect. Right, because uh, on apparel, I don't get well, most of our apparel is the U.S. made and, and Mexico made, but somehow that'll trickle down. Right, ultimately, well, because they're getting their cotton from somewhere, and it's not somewhere. United States, probably. Yeah, so it's it's gonna, you know, so yeah, it, it's. But to take a full circle, we were talking about Kylie. It's about trying to. I don't know. I kind of see the new. I see the new economy as the footprints are smaller. I mean, it's, there's a sort of proof positive example of you know. Um, yeah, so you make a little less money, but it's also, I don't want to be working all the time. <laughs> right. You make less money, but if you have a smaller overhead, you don't have a big warehouse. Yeah. You don't have uh, like big expenses like that. You don't have as many employees or any employees, as the case may be, if you needed to. Obviously, you don't need as much money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, not that, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean you obviously you've worked we've talked about this before you work super lean as far as oh, like employees and stuff like that anyway well, i got one guy you got That's one it. guy you've had as many as what How, what's I've, the most I, you've had i had two people at one time yeah. one was one was on payroll one was like a total uh he was very wasn't working very often yeah um so practically fortune 500 right there <laughs> we were just talking off about uh, the ums and ahs and and the, i'm like the worst for it <laughs> You know, you I know apologize funny? to anyone if I if I say the word uh cons- consistently. I, I don't know why. It just I just I it just happens. So I, I I'm I'm a little bit wary to to bring this up, but when I did the editing for the last one, it wasn't the ums and ahs that was difficult because those are pretty easy to cut out. Yeah, but there's this thing you do, and I haven't heard you do it a lot this time. Okay, but you do this just before you're about ready to say that you go. Uh, <laughs> Or you oh go, my gosh. this thing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't want to bring it up. Because and I wasn't I'm even on. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And it was just like, oh, well. You're giving me one more thing to think about no, now. No, no, no. But here's the thing. About it. That, okay. So it was easy to get rid of because yeah. I could spot it on the audio. Like when I look at the audio file. Oh, yeah. I could easily you spot just, it. Do you just pull down that section then when you, like, do you, do you see it like in a, in a sort of like Pro Tools way where you see, yeah. like, and so you're able I to see the wavelength. You and know? you can pull that wavelength down in that. Oh, that's Yeah, cool. or I could just like, just cut it just right cut out. cut me right out. Yeah, yeah. just like, because my, my key commands, especially in the video, like, like, because essentially what I do is record the video and bring that into uh, Premiere. Yeah. And put it all together, hack it all up, and then export the video. And at the same time, I can also export an MP3. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's cool. So that way, I can do both at the same time, and and just make a you know like here's the podcast, here's the video. Yeah, right? yeah. And so, yeah, it's it it's one of these things you're gonna get there. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Nobody cares, right? I mean, yeah. If it was so excessive, I would I would probably say, dude, work on this. You know what's so funny? I was I was in great like for let's see. I was like a public speaking champion, I think, for like about three years when I lived back up in Canada. Like, I mean, you know, grade six, I think grade six through nine. Yeah. Yeah. And um, m- both my parents are, are academics, and uh, I'm pretty good at public speaking, but 
Yeah, it's a really bad habit. <laughs> I've also discovered another bad habit when I speak. For some reason, I speak out of the side of my mouth. I don't know why I do I've that. I've known that forever. I don't know why I do that. I don't know where it came from. I thought maybe it was like you had like some sort of like nerve thing. No, I don't know. Like I, It's actually kind of starting to freak me out a little bit. <laughs> like I'm not kidding. You've never known that? I have known that, but what's so weird, like I'm not, you know, we talked about this last time. I, I, I'm... I'm trying to get over the whole, that's probably part of this exercise to maybe talk a little bit more and, and, uh, like in, in the, in the social media angle, I have a hard time really turning the subject back on myself. I have a hard time with it. I, I, I it feels weird to me to talk, not to talk, but to, you know, like particularly video is a big thing, right? Oh yeah. I love doing stuff like this is great. You know, I feel you know, I just feel strange yeah. doing it on my own. It, yeah. it feels really strange. So going back to your original question, that's where I've discovered I, I do that. And I don't know why. Yeah. I, I got to figure it out. I I know that <laughs> this is like, this has got to be the most boring thing ever. But my jaw, for some reason, over over the years, because I grind my teeth in my sleep, I think like I used to have a clicking kind of jaw. Oh, I got it right here. Yeah, I think that's kind of has something to do with it. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear it in my head. <laughs> I gonna, But anyway... <laughs> I was trying to get over this little thing as I was coming here <laughs> and I was going to record some video. I recorded it and I'm going, what the fuck is going on? Like I'm speaking side. I was like, I didn't even know. You and have I, to get past it, dude. You I do. I do have to get past it. This will be my way to get past it. It's just an acceptance of being who you are, mm, right? No, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm just more, I mean, I'm not okay with it. <laughs> I can accept it, but I'm just puzzled on where it came from. As long as I've known you, you've been doing it. That's so weird. It's long, and you don't do it all the time. I know. It's like one of these things that just happens once in a while. I, I, and it, maybe it's comes down to initial comfort, right? Like I maybe you like because I've, I've been. I do. It, I do. I do it with it, Rochelle all the right? time. Now that I'm looking at you, like you're right now, you're not doing it. Right. But when we were when we first met up at the coffee shop, it was there, right? That's but true. it's just the thing. It's just it's what Adam does, right? It's yeah. like I don't really look at it any different. Nobody else. I don't think you could talk to anybody you what know. Adam does. <laughs> Like it's just you know uh, it's it it's no different than me like right now like like whenever I talk I'm just constantly like tapping my foot my tapping my heel right it's just one of those things yeah you know or I I'm like talk with my hands right that's what I do I talk with my hands yeah whereas you know you you're you're totally calm to sit there with your hands you know on your hand on your lap or whatever and just talk whereas me it's like I'm very gestural and it's like my hands always just you know like don't tell that to Rochelle because I'm actually I, I gesture I. The only reason why I'm not gesturing right now is because I'm fixed to this microphone. If it wasn't for <laughs> you that, bang it if, off. It, if, if <laughs> when you can afford, when we can afford mics that we can clip on, and we can, I can, my hands would be like, <laughs> won't be able to stop. Rochelle, like my wife, Rochelle, she, uh, yeah, she gets frustrated because you know, anywhere we go, if we're, I'm ordering something and I've got to make a change to the order, like. Can I get avocado on it? It's like, can I get avocado on that? Like, I'm very. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that I'm doing this right now is because I'm transfixed to keeping my mouth in front of this microphone. <laughs> and if anybody here wants to see the animated uh, Adam, please donate. Please be a sponsor yes. of the show. Oh, man. Come sponsor our show so we can get the lapel mics. Get lapel mics and then I can, <laughs> I can work can, on my mouth not going sideways. You can see the real Adam. Oh, he's so so great, he's so great. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But no, we were talking about. Uh, oh yeah, keep, yeah. No, we we finished it off. Yeah, I just want to keep costs lower. You know, yeah. I mean, costs lower. Yeah. Well, you know, I think as time goes on, right? I mean, these this that conversation, or rather, that article you read about. Kylie Jenner has planted a bit of a seed in your head, and so now you're aware of it. Well, know? no, I, I mean, it, 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 it's yes, and, but also like I think we've talked, and and uh, we can talk about something else. But uh, yeah, basically, I, I've been downsizing like costs on a bunch of things over the last couple of years, just out of sheer necessity. Yeah, um, because 
the market changes and things go up and down and yeah you know well um, it, you, it, it, it's almost like you can sense the market's about ready to you something's know, weird. something weird i mean see it, see all the talk the economy is doing great but there is uncertainty in a lot of different sectors and yeah. that's sort of challenging and i've noticed it and i've noticed other people have um you know uh, a lot of a lot of trade show well magic we talked about last time that i'm that i go to i'm not i'm not going to be doing it um you know come august either i wasn't sure but i'm not going to and i know a lot of other my friends who've been doing it with me for years aren't going to be back either so what's the contingency there i know we kind of briefly i don't talked know about. i don't know what the contingency is yeah. i mean see the contingency is i'm just getting tired of and I, and i don't want this to be about the, the poster list because no, no, no. but this it, is but, a market but, th- but this is a market thing I, I i think as a as a business owner you're always spending money to make money and i'm fine with that but i think over time as i've watched the market erode a little bit in places i'm just I, i'm I, i'm having a harder time wanting to do that yeah so as in terms of a contingency you know that and i didn't do the show in in uh in march or excuse me in february it was just email my accounts mm-hmm. i had some dropout and we talked about this last time N- nothing massively significant this show uh, you know it's a lot of my japanese accounts some are going to come see me in costa mesa and i'll be fine there is really no plan yeah. because i don't know other than what i've done what could happen mm-hmm. but i do know i don't have enough money to continue putting that out and hoping it'll come back when you when you notice a market's coming is going down. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it, it's 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 something has to has to give a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know. Have you ever considered diversification in what you're providing? Like say, I mean, there's some you know like not necessarily like garments to home goods or something like that, but something completely different. Like what is like does the poster list stand for anything more? Like we talked about like. Me doing creative market. You like creative market. You also personally were saying maybe putting some of your your photos up there. Yeah. Just to, as a stock imagery or whatnot. Like, is there something else or in that vein or that you know that you considered or maybe could consider diversifying into to, to under the brand or just something totally maybe, different? Yeah. No, under the brand. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I people have, have see a lot of my my competitors who are doing stuff have and, and and it's always been a sign to me that um they've had to because of where the market is so for example like a lot of my my competitors that i'm friends with they who are at magic t-shirt brands you know they're rolling out socks you know they're rolling out mugs mm-hmm. they're rolling out everything and I, I i get it but for me personally like i i I don't know. I, I find it it just becomes, at least when you're trying to, you know, in, the, in my case, shelf it, like put it in a warehouse and everything else, it just makes it that much more fragmented. You know what I mean? For yeah. me a little bit. Yeah. So I can offer it up. And I have, we have, like, I, for example, you know, you got tote bags for a lot of our wholesale accounts. And, um, you know, same thing with kids. Last, like you're, you, you sent me that text last night about kids stuff we'll do a ton of just like the regular street fair shows. I'll get a million people asking me about kid stuff. Right. Yeah. So then what happens, you end up starting, you'll do the odd kid stuff and then you might sell 10% of what you've made. Like, it's just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, so yeah, I, I, it's almost better t- at this point just to stick to gear. Kind guns. of, kind oh, of. Yeah. Just kind of to stick it out and just sort of really focus on, um, you know, like what's working, what accounts are working and look at what your overhead is and then sort of cut some of that down. So yeah. in my case, it was like, okay, well, if I'm spending about, um, you know, 25 to $26,000 a year on, on trade shows, I'm getting the money back, but I'm not really getting, like I'm getting all the money back and then some obviously, but I'm not really gaining any new accounts. Yeah. What's the point of me really being there? Yeah. When well, you can just foster the accounts you have, kind of, yeah, and save yeah. twenty five, twenty six thousand bucks. Yeah, I was, I, I just got done reading Phil Knight's book, uh, the founder of Nike. It's called uh, Shoe Dog. Oh yeah, and it's an interesting read. You probably dig it, but um, I can't read. <laughs> I can't. No, I, no, That's I can't right, read. we forgot. We yeah. can't, can't read. <laughs> well, I got it on audiobook, so you oh can listen to it. Audiobooks are the best, man. I, I don't, I don't actually own books. I don't buy physical books anymore. But anyway, tangent. Um, no, but it's just, I mean, 
just looking at what or listening to him talk about where he started and his humble beginnings because it's if you didn't know any better you would think that the that the guy was a genius from the start but he struggled all the way up until like probably the 90s like it wasn't that. until he really connected with like the NBA and things like that that he really started to like build something and he was even even in that point he was just like he was always leveraging 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 to grow the brand and now obviously Nike is the most popular fitness brand in the world and it started from a couple of shoes like they even they even originally started selling Onitsuka brand like they didn't even have their own shoes until like deep into the 70s right so they weren't even a real shoe maker until until that point but it, so it was interesting to to hear that story and watch him like stick to a certain amount of stuff mm -hmm. for a certain amount of point and just leverage until he could grow those like whatever it was handful of brand, handful of styles into something and i can remember them all right like back in the day like the ones that people wore you know yeah. the, the red and white ones or the mm -hmm. white and blue ones with the leather and and so yeah it's interesting it's an interesting thing and and you know now obviously that you know they look at you know they, they they own hurley and they own all these other brands and it's like you and you see them and they're basically just essentially like you look at hurley now and it's almost just like an extension of nike pretty much yeah it's like nike stuff with hurley brands yeah. written on it you know and of course not hurley is still attached to the surf skate world like they they would i mean that's a right that's why nike got them is so that they could have an arm in that because they tried to get in there themselves and they just didn't have the clout right yeah they didn't I, have the reputation that hurley did i i love um going back to what you're saying about phil like i love that i love stories like that and i think i touched on it on the last podcast about the you know the npr um uh, series I'm, I was I was listening to um, I think it was called How They Make It and yeah it's great I love I love the vulnerability of hearing you know an owner of these massive companies and just their yeah. you know their mistake making their uncertainty like it's just so you know what I mean like because mm -hmm. you just kind of get into that frame of mind and you think that they've got this all figured out which I mean you know in your heart of hearts they didn't but it, it's just really great to hear these stories of like oh wow we really messed this up and uh it just yeah the 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 human nature of it is that I love hearing that yeah you know that's a good and, one and then they're huge you yeah. know I recommend that book highly yeah uh, I, I don't know when it came out but it's I think it's fairly recent but I recommend that if you haven't listened to it and if you over there in the camera or in the microphone listening go check out shoe dog uh, the story of Phil Knight uh, the, if you like the audio he doesn't narrate it but it's pretty good um, you know I, I highly recommend who, that. who narrates it it's just some narrator just, oh, okay just some guy I actually read also recently or listened to <laughs> uh, kitchen confidential oh Anthony yeah Bourdain's. Did you read that or did you listen to that? I listen. I don't, I don't, dude, I do not read yeah. books. It takes too much time and energy to read a book these days because yes. I'm trying to do so many other things. So driving in the car, yeah. listening at the gym, uh, things like that. Does I, he, does he, uh, does he actually? He narrates Oh, that. wow. Cool. So that's, that's an epic one. I, yeah. He, even if you're not a big fan of food, you definitely have to be, a, well, you have to be a fan of cursing <laughs> and bend and foul language and, 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 uh, the gestures and conversations around drug use and whatnot because he obviously was an indulgent person but a great book about you know kind of exposing the underbelly as he says of that world right? mm -hmm. and, and he talks very kindly about a lot of people and he talks like a lot of trash on certain things right not as much trash as he talked later on in his life as he got more bold you know talking about guys like Guy Fieri or whatever but it's an excellent book it really is so good I highly recommend it yeah I, I like to definitely check that one out um I'm on the audiobook tip too. I'm gonna definitely do that because. What do you read? What have you read or listened to that you like? Uh, you know, the only thing that I started reading, and and again, it's it's so hard to find time. Mm -hmm. I was reading it in Palm Springs. I've been reading that um that uh, No Effects book. Oh, I haven't. I don't uh, know. That. Yeah, it's what's it called? Uh, it, it's autobiographical, and it's really I can't remember the name. It's got a really great name. It's it's eluding me now. But they basically all all four members of the band, each kind of write their own story about what happened with their childhood how they were in the mm -hmm. band and it's it's pretty intense yeah. it's very very um revealing i mean um all of them uh, had a lot of interesting backgrounds a lot of things happened to them when they were children like 
great 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 read so far yeah it was recommended to me actually colin recommended it to me and uh i've been I, i've had it forever and i've just been sort of slowly getting through it we'll take a look at that maybe there's an audio version of that but uh we'll there put the be. link to that one in the in the show notes or yeah the drummer sure. yeah eric uh eric the drummer lives here in long beach he's a half owner of long beach united on oh i didn't know that yeah he's him and the him and the other guy he, i can't remember his name now he's a he's a nice guy he's uh he was a drummer in a Boston band. I can't remember his name. I can't remember the name of the band, but a hardcore band. But uh, yeah, Eric owns uh, Smelly or whatever he owns. <laughs> he owns. He, uh, they call him Smelly. He, he owns. He owns half of Long Beach United. Yeah. Right so on. yeah. Well, cool. All right. Well, we've gone on a while. So. Uh, is any of this any good? Of course. It, ah, I don't you know. guys stop being so. Stop being this so. This is going to be my part of the, <laughs> my, my part of the podcast. It's going to be me self doubting everything. <laughs> And then everyone will start seeing that I'm getting better right? over time, or maybe not. Right. Please, everybody, leave a comment. Let Adam know that he's okay. And let me know if my my mouth is doing that thing. It's so <laughs> well, annoying. it's on this side. Oh, the yeah, camera's over there. Nobody that. can see it. Yeah. Nobody can see it. And anybody listening. Does that mean like I, I might be getting some sort of like brain thing or no, something? No. Dude, it's been – I've known you – at least 10 years okay. you've been doing it this whole time oh. you were probably doing it long before me Gosh. it's just a thing just all don't right. worry about it all right just own it you okay. just gotta own it, it. <laughs> all right all right folks that's it signing off we'll see you next time again reminder oh i didn't actually mention this to you but we decided at least for the time being bi-weekly we're gonna do this every other week just to consider our schedules he's got a busy summer schedule I've got some crazy stuff going on myself. So, bi-weekly, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Remember, be good today. Be even better tomorrow. See you.